Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andre Mora. And now for something a little different, I'd like to invite you all to take a deep breath and come on a dive with us. Over the past 100 years, the offshore industry has been booming, mainly driven by oil and gas and more recently by offshore renewable energy. We have installed thousands of structures offshore. And all of these structures need to be maintained and repaired in the harsh environment that we have offshore. Altogether, this has created a massive industry of over 100 billion euros a year. So how do we carry out these operations? Well, traditionally, we use divers. They are incredibly versatile and precise because they're able to use their hands to carry out these operations. However, they have two major drawbacks. Firstly, they are limited in depth. They are comfortable working down to 50 or 60 meters, but these structures go down into the thousands. And importantly, for safety reasons. There are dozens of deaths, hundreds of incidents and accidents, and we now know that being a professional diver has long-term chronic issues. Consequently, the industry as a whole is moving away from divers. And countries such as Norway, which have a great deal of tradition working offshore, are trying to eliminate them completely. So what's the alternative to divers? Well, work-class ROVs. Essentially, these are very complex underwater robots. And this is what they look like. And they're actually very good at addressing the issues that they have with divers. They're incredibly safe to operate, and they go down to unlimited depth. However, they have their issues. They're not as precise or able to carry out exactly the same tasks, and they have incredibly complex and consequently expensive logistics to deploy. So what we can see is that there's a clear gap between the ability and depth at which divers operate and those that, that work class ROVs operate at. Now, what I haven't told you yet is that there's an entirely different class of ROVs. This is what you traditionally call an inspection class ROV. And if it's a little larger, you'd call these general class ROVs. And why are they called this way? Because their main attribute is their ability to collect images. At best, they can have an operating arm with one function, which means that they're basically useless at doing anything that is complex. And this is where the Kraken comes in, because the Kraken is all about empowering small ROVs. It has three components. The first is a docking arm. This docking arm allows it to attach to the structure it's about to operate on. This gives it much more stability and consequently precision in the operation it's about to do. Secondly, a manipulator arm. This manipulator arm has seven degrees of freedom, exactly the same as a human arm does. This makes the whole control much more intuitive. And lastly, a sleeve interface. This allows the operator, which is at the surface, to do the movements he wants to be replicated at the bottom of the sea with very high precision. Our goal is to make operating the Kraken as easy as moving your own arm. If we compare the Kraken to the work class ROVs, we can see that we have huge gains in price, day rate, and operational costs. These are very big savings in the order of one, uh, around one order of magnitude. All of this while simplifying logistics incredibly and maintaining the same record on human safety. And where do we want to take this? Well, the first market, our penetration market, will be the offshore wind market. Why? Because it has easier certification requirements. And because it is very focused on cost cutting, it is looking for solutions that will allow it to do so. Importantly, it has a growth rate of almost 30% a year. This is installed capacity. With the aging of the structures, that means that that is the least size for the operation and maintenance of these structures as they get older. However, our core market is the oil and gas market. It'll take us longer to get there because the certification requirements are more demanding. However, once inside, the profit margins are much more interesting. And to give you an idea, we're talking about an industry that between purchases and services is spending more than 3 billion US dollars in ROVs alone. 
And how are we going to get there? Our focus for the first two years will be in research and development as well as validation. At the end of those two years, we expect to make our first sale to the renewable energy sector. The next two years, we'll be building on that experience and attaining the certification needed to enter the oil and gas. Further on, we hope to scale up the Kraken in order for it to be able to compete with other arms in the work class uh, sector. And for this, we're looking for 450,000 euros of investment. Using a pricing model based on diver equivalency and having two different prices, one for the renewable energy sector and one for the oil and gas sector, and the difference in the product will come down to the requirements that the oil and gas industry is going to make out of this product, we expect to reach a revenue of 40 million euros by year eight. Our team is being led by Luis Gomes and Paul Martins. And you can see that we have a very diverse team. Two of us are pilots, and Pedro Pires has finished his PhD developing a mechanical arm to help um, do hip surgeries. So we have a lot of uh, critical knowledge. Importantly, the Kraken has been very well received by key players in the industry. This reinforces our belief that we may have something that could be a game changer. So what I'd like to ask to you is, who would like to help us to release the Kraken? Thank you very much.